Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Know Your Gear QA Live. Sorry for uh, being a few minutes late. I was late because today's episode number 155 is the first episode where um, the podcast is recorded separate. Uh, especially since during uh, this uh, the uh, the current status of of things in the world, the uh, live shows are getting really digitized, and there's all kinds of jumping and stuff like that. So what's great is when you listen to this as a podcast, it will actually be a clean recorded um, uh, um, you know audio. So you won't be listening to the actual audio of the the live show. You'll be listening to a separate audio. So of course uh, I had to set it up and uh, set it up. There it is. All right. A couple things to note. If you're watching this live, a couple things to know. First, uh, uh, if you're going to ask me a question, please start the question with the question mark so I know to look for it. Thank you so much. Even if you don't have a question, you want me maybe start a, a subject, a topic, if you will, you can start that with a question mark as well. Um, if you're watching the rebroadcast of this, uh, you can... Um, uh, check the uh, content in the, or uh, sorry, check the information in the description and it'll let you know what I indexed and uh, what we talked about. So there's some information right there. All right. Another thing that it's important to announce, and I'm sorry, guys, so many announcements, uh, but if you're going to do a super chat, uh, YouTube has changed the rules of how the super chats are seen by me. Uh, they're no longer logged in the other screen where I was. So I'm going to have to answer super chats if they pop and if, and I might miss them. So uh, please bear with me uh, until we figure this out. If you guys are out there and you've seen now in the new system where they're archiving them, I've been looking and I cannot find them. So uh, it's interesting. A uh, little fun, little fact for you guys over the uh, these episodes doing this in the super chats. One thing that's funny is, you know, YouTube takes a piece of the super chat and then they pay me the rest. And, uh, there's no log, so who knows if they've ever paid me the right amount or any of us the right amounts. It's part of the new world. All right, so what do we want to talk about? Well, there's a first. Uh, first is Shinnery Kid is did a super chat, and he says, alternatives to Dirty Finger pickups for the Explorer. Um, well, I like the Dirty Finger pickups. I think it's a love-hate relationship. I find those pickups fall into the same category as the JB pickups by Seymour Duncan. In other words, I feel like some players are like, yeah, those are the pickups. I got to have them, and some are just not, not digging it. I actually like them. It depends on what you don't like about them. So the problem when you say alternatives is like, well, alternative to what? Like, you know, you think they're too aggressive sounding. They distort too quickly when you're pushing an amp. Uh, they're too muddy. They're too clear. Um, they're not, uh, you know, but I could tell you this without any information, all I can tell you is sticking to the Gibson family of pick up, pickups. I like the 57 classics uh, and then the burst buckers. Those are just my choices. Not the burst bucker pros, not the other way, just the burst buckers. Um, it's like a one, two and a three, right? I should remember that I did a video about it. Um, but uh, more importantly, uh, I think the 57 classics over time. I just really like the 57 classics uh, the most, but maybe I'll do a shootout with those pickups. I, I reached out to Gibson uh, about uh, doing some videos with their pickups. They were uh, uh, kind enough. Al John. So you guys know Al John from some of the other live shows, you know, he's, he's a, uh, he's a great guy. Um, and um Al John uh, said he'd run it up the flagpole and get back to me. But of course, you know, this is the the world we live in right now. Think about this. I did a review of the um, Lizzie Hale Explorer. I still have it because there's nowhere to ship it to because Gibson's warehouse is closed. So it's just sitting here visiting until it's time for it to go back. So and that's actually what's funny is um, it's uh, I feel like uh, the airport right now with all the airplanes on the ground. Um, I actually have a few guitars that you guys seen re me recently review that are all due back to companies, but there's just nowhere to send them. All right, Grumpy Mike. Hey, Grumpy Mike, how's it going? He says, Thank, uh, thanks to you, I now want a telly with a bridge pickup in the neck position. Oh, man. You know what's funny is? Uh, I, <laughs> I did that video. I was having so much fun. That video uh, took three different versions to kind of see how it would even work. Uh, you know, as a concept, because at first I was going a different way with it. And then, um, but I really love that bridge pickup. In fact, um, the uh, Somnium guitar will have a double bridge pickup set in it. Uh, they're going to be playing for a while. 
So, so yeah, I really dig it. I'm glad you like it too. Now what I'm curious about, and I probably will do a follow-up video. That's what the whole point of, of, of telling everybody I'll do 50 of these is that we can address things when I do something and you guys go, hey, you didn't talk about this or hey, it would have been really cool if you mentioned that. We can come back to those videos and do that stuff. And uh, so I'm really curious, not only about doing the double bridge uh, tele pickup uh, in the guitar, but also seeing what other pickups will give you that kind of vibe in the, in the neck. So uh, Grumpy Mike, if uh, if you're thinking, hey, you want to get a bridge pickup for the, you know, a tele bridge pickup, put it in the neck. Uh, hopefully I'll be able through some ex experimenting to find you some other alternatives, maybe to get that sound. So, all right. What else do we got? Um, we have another super chat on the, uh, is from Jim 77 V. He's obviously a Steve I fan or just an Ibanez Jim fan. Uh, it says, hey, Phil, any thoughts on the Kiesel issues this week? Uh, so if you guys didn't hear, I, I, I one of you, uh, one of you guys mentioned something about, uh, roasted maple gate on last Friday show. I saw it, I thought where I saw it and I was like, I wasn't sure. So, you know, you get a, your spider senses tingling, you know, when you hear something like that, you know, like, Hey, did you see Kiesel's maple gate or whatever? And I was like, Oh, okay. What's going on? And I really didn't find anything. And then I saw something on the gear page. Uh, I don't really in go on the gear page uh, very often, but the gear page emails you stuff. So they emailed me something. And then of course I saw uh, a video. Uh, somebody sent me a link, of course, as we all do, somebody sending links and stuff and talking about what happened. So let me give you a synopsis of it. Uh, and so if you're not aware of it, you'll be aware, but it's mostly, this is not to really spread the gossip, but more so to anyone who's already seen the issue, we can discuss it. The good news is that before uh, is that what happened was there's good news. It, it, it's one of those stories I think ends well. Seems like um, Jeff Kiesel was doing a live show, and apparently in the live show he uh, was um, berating, or he was um, I don't know what you call it, like call out culture or whatever it is that people call this stuff now. Uh, you think somebody on YouTube like me would have some kind of understanding of of social media? I, I really inept when it comes to social media and the terminology. Um, but that being said, so what happens is he, customer who had an issue, the issue was very, very, very big. Uh, it was, he got a maple neck and a roast maple fretboard and the fretboard looks like it's not roasted and the neck looks roasted. And so I guess he posted and said, does this look right? And uh, so, so Jeff, Basically, I guess when he went to Kiesel, Kiesel said, that's just how it goes. Jeff did a, a on a live stream said, um, hey, if you don't like it, send it back and pay a $200 restocking fee. And if you pay us, we'll build you another one. And if you don't like that one, it's a $200 restocking fee. And uh, so again, this is the synopsis. I have to give you the summary of this. The big issues, of course, were the, the I understand sometimes you have frustration. All of us have a job. And anybody who has a job who works with customers, I'm not excusing anything. I'm explaining a, a, a what what happens with these scenarios. Sometimes when you're dealing with a customer who's not educated about what you're doing, you have frustration because you have a customer who's like, "Hey, you know, I want it this way," and you you know you can't do it that way. In this case, that doesn't seem to be the case. What happened was the consumer, uh, the customer had several Carvins and Kiesel guitars. Seem to own a Kiesel shirts. Be very familiar with the brand. Very familiar with the expectations of what the brand should be sending him. This was I, I heard, you know, no no official numbers, but I heard a rumor of 20 guitars. This guy owned 20 guitars. So imagine what happens is that you're a, a, a customer of Kiesel. You buy 20 guitars. You tell Kiesel that you have a problem with it. They tell you tough luck. And Jeff Kiesel goes off on a tangent uh, berating you. And uh, and what's great about this is why I said there's a good news is Jeff Kiesel is not denying that happened. You know what I mean? There's no, I, I want to be very clear to anyone who wants to start crap on the internet. You understand that both parties are in agreement with what happened. And that's very important because that's uh, very important. So Jeff basically went on a tangent, to, uh, calling out the guy, uh, saying some stuff that I don't want to repeat, but it, no profanity, but it was not nice stuff. What I saw. Um, now that being said, I was curious at the moment. There was some, I, I, when I saw this, I saw all this happen. I was thinking, I'm sure I hope a lot of you were thinking, I wonder how much of this is because the times right now, it's a very tense times right now. Um, especially if, for those of us who are unsure about paychecks, about our businesses, unsure about everything. Again, this is not an excuse. I was just wondering how much of that was probably in play. As although Jeff is kind of short fused sometimes, and I, I and I can't take back anything I've ever said. So I got to be very clear with talking about. It. I have these 155 podcasts. I have a podcast called 
Jeff Kiesel or Kiesel's is, uh, oh, I don't even remember the title. It's uh, what the question came up. What by, uh, is why polarized, right? Some people love him and hate him. So he's been in a discussion on this channel before. Uh, so obviously we know his personality. He's he's intense. I think he's an intense personality. Okay, that's how I. Intense people tend to be really nice and really not nice. That's what intense means. They they tend to personalities go 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 this. So only what happens is um, he's because he got called out publicly or what have you. Jeff has now issued a formal apology on his Instagram. I watched the apology. It was very heartfelt. I I, I really feel a lot of feel like that way anybody's own personal decision side if that's enough my personal is the only one that there's only two apologies that need to be accepted the first the apology to the customer that's the only customer that apology right if somebody does something to you you're the only one that can decide whether or not the apology is more are valid or not so um i like to call it surrogate victims uh this is the new thing now uh and and i don't know if that's a term like i said in social media but I feel like I see it all the time. I feel like a lot of people like to go on tangents about things that didn't happen to them. They're upset about a thing that happened to somebody else. Well, I can understand being upset about that, but you understand if you're not the third for, you know, it's hard for you to decide the punishment should be. So um, in this, uh, the customer will have to decide if the apology was enough. I got the vibe it was, but I again, I don't. Some of you guys will have me more. And I didn't really dive into this. This wasn't going to something that was going to consume my week or weekend for me. Uh, it was just more of a, to be honest with you, if I didn't have a live show every Friday, I probably wouldn't even pay attention at all. But I, this comes up. So, so to what I'm saying, um, yeah, the audio video, it's internet, guys. I'm sorry. Um, so anyways, um, else, uh, to the uh, issue at hand, um, the, Apology was issued, and then of course he apologized to everyone who had to watch that or his issues, and and so it's up to everybody to decide if that was enough. So I'm sorry if there's audio issues. That's like I said. That's why I decided to have a separate run on the podcast. If you guys are with me, you can listen to it and stream it on iTunes and listen to it in full swing. But um, but anyways, so like I said, this seems to be the synopsis. Of what happened? I'm sure you guys will have different that that's my take on it somebody got uh you know somebody got used somebody apologized it seems to be over um and then everybody now has to decide for themselves whether or not they will or will not buy a guitar um, company or what have you will this i you know i love it when i'm unbiased and i don't believe anybody's unbiased Everybody has a bias. It's just important to know what the bias is. Okay. So if somebody says, Oh, I don't have, I'm not a bias because I didn't get paid. Uh, no, you're biased. You know what I mean? Your experiences may ha give you a bias. Um, so I once made a joke. Uh, I'll share with you. I said, If anyone really wants a truly un guitar review, you should my wife to do it because she could give a crap about any of this. And so, of course, not caring, sure, it would be totally unbiased. Probably won't be interesting, but it'll be very unbiased. That is, I have a bias, my bias. Um, it's not because I have Kiesel guitars and the idea that I met them at the NAMM show and they sent me a guitar. That's a very cool thing to do. So obviously, how am I supposed to be like, oh, those guys are jerks. They sent me a guitar. Um, however, my bias is that. My bias is from being in in the media, being on live shows every week, obviously having businesses. Um, I'm not excusing his... Uh, his, uh, his um, I don't want to say attitude. I'm not excusing his what um, did. I'm just saying I can empathize with it. Sadly enough, I was on the record for empathizing with uh, Mark Agnesi too. You know when that happened too. Again, not not justifying it, not not agreeing with it. I just can empathize with when you say things and you put yourself out there, you're going to get beaten a little bit, and so it's going to hurt. So, on that note, uh, but uh, what do you again? What do you guys think? Is it the end? You know what I mean? It's not good timing to have this happen with Kiesel. So uh, I really do feel, though, that the, the apology was very good for what I saw. In other words, for how I felt, because trust me, before the apology, and maybe this is good, if Jeff Kiesel or the guys at Kiesel, because I know those guys, they ever see this podcast, I can honestly say this. Up until Jeff Kiesel's uh, apology, which uh, somebody you know sent to me as a link, I think, two days ago, 
I think I was going to probably stay away from Kiesel for a while, for a long time. Like maybe I don't need to buy any guitars. Maybe I don't need to review any guitars from them. Maybe I need to stay away. Um, not because I'm afraid that you, there'll be backlash on my channel, just because I personally didn't feel that that was a way you should treat anyone. Um, and, um, but he apologized and we'll have to go from there. And now here comes the second part. And I know I've spent too long on the subject, but this is probably another good piece of advice. And again, good, good advice, right? You can always get a good advice from anybody. It's not just the apology, it's the actions after the apology. So now it's about, now that he's said, hey, I'm sorry, and that was what I did was wrong, which is important. Now it's about doing the right things from now forward. And that's how, so if somebody says, I'll never buy a Kiesel again, well, please don't be that naive. If you, you know, if so, somebody says right now, that doesn't matter what happened, I'll still buy a Kiesel. That's fine too. What I'm saying is, please make your decision based on, the actions that go all the time, not just that one day, but maybe going forward. How about this? I could say, oh, the apology is good enough for me and I'll buy a keys again. But in a couple of weeks, something else can happen. I'll change my mind. So again, we're just going to have to stay, stay on and stay in tune. And luckily for us, Jeff's very public. So he'll have many opportunities to impress us, change our minds or not. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, yeah, Paul says, I bought a Kiesel and I had a great experience. Well, of course, the, I bought a used Vader and the guitar is amazing. And then, of course, they sent me uh, the Delos and it's it's amazing. So, I mean, it's hard for me to have an uh, experience that's, you know, but I, so again, I'm not really a good uh, barometer on this. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I, I can tell you for a fact that um, I have been looking at Kiesel's a lot lately before this happened. And then I was like, Ooh, trust me. My first reaction when this all went down was like, I'm so glad I didn't buy a Kiesel right now. And then I was like, Oh, well now after the apology stuff, I'm like, maybe I'm back to it again. So, all right. so, and, and again, like I said, my only experience, with, uh, Jeff was he was to me. And, uh, I, I remember I've only had a brief conversation with the show, but the reason I say that with any weight is I have said some very, not nice things. I don't say not nice things, but you understand on the, I've been, I've critiqued Jeff Kiesel enough times on this channel. He was very aware of all those times and he didn't hold it against me. So I want to try to do the same thing with him. Um, just me says, sounds like a, well, of course, you know, obviously it's something just bad happened. You're not going to have a great impression of them. So, but do your research. Oh, sorry guys. I'm drinking water. I'm also reading comments, I'm trying to, on the comments, but I'm really curious. Uh, I want to say Wanna Beetle. Hey, Wanna Beetle says, uh, I want to see what uh, what Wanna Beetle says. Says, I only saw Jeff's apology and it was out of context for me, uh, but I've got a car of an acoustic and I thought that I bought in 2001 and it's great. Well, remember, uh, you know, talk about stuff we've talked about channel before. We've talked, in fact, I said this within the last six months. I don't know what episode it was, but it was within the last six uh, month episodes. I said, sometimes I kind of wish that we don't get to know anybody who owns companies anymore. I really wish I didn't know Paul Reed Smith or I didn't wish, I wish I don't know the, you know, these, the guys who own these companies because sometimes I, I have a love of the product and sometimes it's like the people are making this. One of the problems I have on YouTube now is, um, you know, brands that I really like are, you know, products, guitars, amps, pedals. I really like, and then I meet the company in a, in my YouTube ar arrangement and it's like, they're horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, so I, you know, you just go on your way. So yeah, sometimes I, I wish, you know, we didn't, we didn't actually have to meet the owners. Um, there is a theory though, in business, especially now that people buy from people. So it's a really important for owners like Jeff, Josh Scott from JHS. And of course, Brian Wampler does it. And, uh, you know, Jeff Kiesel and of course, Paul Reed Smith's good at it. And, you know, some people don't understand, like, you know, they'll say, Hey, these channels really like these guys. I'm like, well, these guys are the ones that are being public. So, what happens is those guys are putting themselves out there. They're taking, uh, they're taking the risk of getting the, the people to like them and, and sell a lot of product and, and, and live great. Or these kind of things happen. You know what I mean? Your bad days go on there too, as well. It's tough. Like I said, it's tough. I can relate. Here's why I say I can relate. Um, I think his mistake was making the content. And I think he knows that too. He shouldn't have been on live. Um, this week, if you guys notice, I only put out one video and it was last night. And that segues into something that is actually truly horrible to talk about. Uh, those of you are going to, uh, some of you guys are going to be 
uh, very aware of who I'm talking about. Um, we have a member of our community. His name is Michael Shy. Michael was someone who used to help the a lot of you guys uh, doing emails. Uh, you guys, a lot of you are familiar with him. He would answer emails for me. He would help me with the website. He helped me with uh, dealing with sometimes with companies because I don't really like to do companies. Um, and uh, he passed away this week. So you can imagine uh, some of you guys uh, will know uh, who I'm talking about and you'll know what a sweet and caring person he was. Uh, he was uh, a really, a really great individual. I'm, I'm better for knowing him and uh, my heart goes out to his family and to his kids. And uh, those of you guys, like I said, he's, he spent hours answering questions for you guys. And, um, and he wrote some great articles. And so my, I just want to tell you guys that, you know, about that. And that's another reason why I didn't put out some content this week when I was told about it. It's, it's hard. And, and, and I'm experienced now, luckily for me, experienced enough in this format to know when you get that kind of news, you don't make any content because you're, you think you can get through it and say, Hey, everybody, isn't this pedal great, but really there's going to be some weird subtext, not just that you're not in a good mood, but so saying, so this ties in, you know what I mean? Sometimes you just got to know when to stay, stand away from the camera. This is a good advice to all you guys that are, that have smaller channels and are growing too. you know, don't feel the need to make content. Um, for me yesterday, I was able to take three different videos, make them. And then I, at, at one point I went and I decided I'm just going to have fun. And that's the video you guys saw last night. It was my last edit and it was done really fast. Uh, well, fast being in hours versus sometimes days just because I started having a good time again. And it was like, I wanted to just get my head out of it. And so it really saved me. It really made my, my week better. So uh, again, uh, just thought I'd give you guys the update. And uh, like I said, I, I've, uh, I've reached out to someone who knows him and said that if they have any services, I'd like to send flowers. I will let you guys know if there's an, a, somewhere we can send something to the family. If there's anything we can do for the family, I will let you guys know. Okay. If I find out anything, I'll pass it on. Um, but again, let's, let's, uh, let's go on. Um, the, what else? Um, we need a subject. Here's a subject. Let's get us bad. Brad is going to get us on the next subject. Thank you, bad Brad. He says, how do I know if the height on my strat pickups are correct? It's a great question, Brad. And he says, uh, change my pick guard and I'm not sure thing. Uh, Phil, loving what you're doing. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, Brad, uh, bad Brad, there's two ways. First, you can just Google what are the, the what are the correct measurements from Fender. Fender will have specifications. See, we're done with specifications. You can get them everywhere. Um, I usually have them written down. Um, I use those generally as a guideline, okay? So uh, there's a couple things. So you can just go right to that measurement and go off what the factory specs say, and that, that will get you there. But what I will tell you is what I do. Um, what I like to do for pickups and strap pickups, same is I like to set them not super high against the string, um, as high as I think I can get them to the string. So let's say, and again, I'm, I don't have a, a measurement off my head. I'm going to say millimeters from the string, really, really on the string. And you'll notice as you hit the string, first of all, the string will probably hit the, the pickup. And, um, so of course this is different than the which is where you're going to, the last, you're going to do the measurement off of what they're saying. What I my ears. In fact, uh, I, I, I once said this to a customer many years ago, I'll say it to you now. Um, in a perfect world, I'll measure the height of my pickups with my eyes closed uh, in the dark. I don't even need to see them. I want to hear them. You can put the string or you can put it against the body, right? doesn't matter whatever you do. And then you start moving them in a direction until you find a spot that sounds good. Now, sometimes people are like, I don't know what that is. That's probably why you want to use factory specs. But what I learned me is this. And the reason why I'm not saying factory specs are bad. They're a great resource. And, but they're just like any specification. They're just general specifications. What I did one day is uh, I, I determined, you know, from years of playing that I liked where all my pickups heights were. And I got curious one day, this is probably 10 years. And I said, I should probably look to see how close I am to factory specs. And I started measuring them. And I realized that none of my pickups were near what the factory is saying. 
uh, they should be. <laughs> and uh, it's because I was just using my ears over time. And sometimes it's just your hands. It's in the way. So like I said, use your ears. Uh, it, you'll tell when it gets too close, it'll get really bright, chirpy. Obviously, you can throw the intonation and stuff out. But just listening to it, you'll hear it. It's just too dynamic. Uh, it's pushing the amp too hard. Of course, it's going to be it's going to have a, 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 a crackle to it. If you put the pickup too far away from the string, it gets too hollow. It doesn't have any bite to this pickup anymore. But what's great about that is those are guidelines. You could actually say the exact opposite. You could be like, man, Phil, when I get the pickup really far away, there's a softer sound to it that I like. So you use your ears to adjust your pickups, but I would still use factory specs to get you started. You know what I mean? Or like I said, start from the top, start from the bottom and just start moving them. Um, and, and it sounds like forever. Let me, let me tell me, tell you, um, if if you if you sit down with a strat just a strat much less any other guitar strat and you start adjusting pickup height you should be able to nail it in 15 minutes you know all three pickups sound great five minutes of pickup tops you know overall um and uh and that's it and you said it but use your ear because um it will serve you well and if you don't have a good ear yet then use the factory specs but pay attention and mess with it so that's how you adapt in it uh you 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 that's how you train your ear uh, Voodoo Fist, hey Voodoo Fist, Fist said uh, it's got two questions. All right, for you today, is Pro Audio Star a legit online site? Okay, that's a great question and a great topic. Uh, and my uh, Strat Bridge height screws are too high and uh, scraping the meaty part of my palm. Okay, uh, when I play, is there a fix for that without uh, ruining the intonation? Yes. Okay, so we'll separate two questions. So Pro Audio Star is legit. Uh, they are, uh, and now when I say legit, I've purchased from them. They, they didn't scam me or trick me pro audio star. There's a few of these, uh, uh, places that are on the, on reverb and they generally will have too good of a deal to be true. Um, they're known for doing these things where they'll go, Hey, we have a, uh, a used, uh, guitar, but they have like 50 of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or they'll be like, Hey, we have a, a deal on a pedal and it's like 60% off the pedal. And, uh, it's like open box, box but it, they have 50 of them. <laughs> um, there are, there are, we, we talked about this kind of previous, previously on the last podcast about map, which is minimum advertised pricing. Some retailers and manufacturers will try to tell you that it stands for minimum accepted pricing. That's BS. It's, there is no rule that minimum accepted price, uh, minimum advertised price is not the same thing, uh, is, 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 is they're different. So here's what it is. Minimum advertised pricing says that a manufacturer can tell a retailer in the U S uh, and not in Maryland, because I think Maryland has a law against it. So I think that's why Paul Reed Smith Guitars can't do it. Um, they can have SMAP. Uh, I'm not making this up. SMAP would be suggested minimum advertised pricing. <laughs> so um, so anyway, so MAP is minimum advertised pricing. So the manufacturer says, hey, you can uh, sell this guitar for whatever you want, a million dollars, but you can't go below $5.99. So, right. So it's like, sure. Right. So of course I'm going to sell it for 800 bucks when everybody else is selling for 599. So everybody goes to the 599. So minimum advertised pricing is what you can advertise it for. It's not what you can sell it for. Okay. So if a, if a retailer says, um, uh, you know, Hey, I can't sell it below that. Um, we can, you just can't advertise it. Once a per customers in your store are dealing with you direct on the phone or dealing with you on email, it, you generally can adjust those rules. Now keep in mind, it's their discretion. They don't have to give you a deal, but can they? Sure. Sure. Of course it's done every day. Uh, not only have I done it as a retailer, I've done it as a customer it's a, a thousand times, maybe 10,000 times uh, with no issues. Although technically some manufacturers can get grumpier than others about what they consider advertising. So what I mean by that is if somebody emails you a price that can be considered advertising by manufacturer, I think that's also BS, but I've seen, I have personally had a customer buy something from me. I gave them a receipt and then the manufacturers try to state that the receipt was then therefore advertising because it was printed. Uh, it was a far stretch and they couldn't do anything to me for it. Um, I think they just want to give me some grief, but so back to what I'm saying is there's companies that do that stuff. Pro audio star is one of them. However, if you're having any issues personally with them as a customer service issue, that's a separate issue. But, uh, you asked if they were legit online site. Uh, yes, they are legitimate in that they have product and they sell product. I have bought from them. Um, because there's a, so, you know, I can't even, I'm not even looking them up on reverb. I'm doing off memory pro audio star. 
Uh, what's the other one? Uh, dog house? No, something dog. Uh, there's like a bunch of them that when you say them to me, I already know because, you know, uh, there's a Dave's guitars in Florida. Um, uh, please, uh, again, I'm just, if I'm wrong, I don't want to be saying the wrong retailers and stuff, but you, I'm just generally saying there's a bunch of retailers online that really are notorious for giving good deals. Good for them. And so they don't get in trouble if the manufacturers are watching me on live. Keep in mind, they're doing it all in the legitimate way. They're not violating the map by saying it's new, you know, new product. They're saying it's either open box or it's something like that. I saw a comment. Somebody said that they got kind of hosed by Prado star. And I'm sure again, people can have all kinds of experiences that are good and bad. Um, but uh, but at the, the, the core of your question, if you're asking me with what I've experienced, I have, I can tell you, if I go through my reverb history, I have bought from them. Um, I think I bought it. In fact, I think I bought a pedal from them just, uh, within the last year where it was one of those, like I said, it was 60% off and I bought it just to, and I played it for like, I don't know, like three, four months and I really didn't dig it. And then I ended up selling it for a uh, full pop as used because by then you know everybody was getting that used for them because they discontinued them so it was cool um so there you go on that and of course there's comments and questions people are putting stuff in there so if they're having good or bad experiences that'll give you feedback as well but again i'm just addressing whether or not they're a legitimate online site and as far as i know they are uh from my experience uh strat bridge height screws okay so now you're saying they're cutting into you. that's really common you can you can take a dremel you can cut them down that's easy to do um, if you're familiar with using a Dremel and those kind of tools. Uh, some people say sand them. Don't sand them. They take forever. I, you can just Dremel them down. However, you can buy different heights. Allen's, they're Allen screws. You can buy different height ones to install them in there. Um, but there is a bridge saddle replacement that I really like. Um, let me look it up. I did a video for Stu Mac. I did two videos for Stu Mac on their channel. They asked me once to do videos like on my channel. And... Um, they were the first company and actually the only other company that asked me to do like a how to use their product demonstration. And so I said, I'd do it, but only on their website. So it's on their website. And that was one of the products. And that's how I got familiar with it. I got to try it. Um, I'm going to find it for you right now um, because I really like them. In fact, so, you know, I liked it, even though I got, I, they sent it to me and I demoed it. Um, I liked it so much. I bought two sets, uh, one for me and one for a friend. So they are called, and I'll show you the picture too, so you know where to go. Uh, yes, Highwood Vintage Saddles, right? And uh, I want to show you this. Let me go ahead and share with you guys, so you guys know. And there's other, keep in mind, every time I suggest something, everybody's like, oh, but this, this, there's tons of stuff, guys. I'm just showing you what I've I've experimented uh, with. This is called the uh, Highwood con uh, Contoured Vintage Saddle for Strat Set 6. Uh, this is it. It's really cool. You can see what they do. See, they roll this piece of steel right here, uh, so that your hand doesn't have to touch that. And, uh, so those are great. Uh, 50 bucks. They're not cheap, but this is Stu Mac. So you can look online to see if they're cheaper. This is not a Stu Mac product. This is a product sold by Stu Mac. Um, I, I think I've been very clear about this, but if not, sometimes it's always nice to be clear. I really like Stu Mac products. This is not a Stumac product. <laughs> this is a product that Stumac sells. You can buy this product from somebody else too as well. So you have those choices. Um, so there you go. I, I, I use Stumac tools like crazy. And I do buy from Stumac from time to time. Uh, well, no, all the time. But what I mean by non-Stumac tools, I buy them from time to time. Even though I can find them cheaper, sometimes I just do it because either I need to pad up my order because I got to pay the shipping anyways. Or, uh, you know, they. I never get grief from them. I never get problems. So sometimes that's worth it too. It's tough. You know, it depends on your mood. Sometimes in the mood to get a deal because I can justify buying the purchase. Sometimes I just want, you know, I don't care what it costs. I just don't want grief. You know what I mean? I don't want to worry about it not showing up or whatever. Uh, yeah, Mikey Newman says, hey, Mikey, how's it going? Mikey says, uh, Highwood saddles are great, but not cheap. Yeah, that would be my, that's my exact comment. They're, they were great, but they were pricey. Um, so if there's a, a different place to find them in there, there you are. By the way, just me said put Pitbull audio. That's what I was thinking with dog. See, Pitbull audio. I have bought a lot of stuff for Pitbull too. Same thing. So uh, Pitbull, uh, so you guys know, you know, it's a gear channel. We'll talk gear. Pitbull audio has given me great deals. Sometimes though, you, even if they don't have an offer on their reverb store, what you do is you, um, you email them and say, hey, would you take this deal? And what I've experienced is I'd say with Pitbull, 50% of the time they say yes. And the other 50, they say yes, but you got to call us because we don't want to do it on reverb. They don't want to pay reverb fees and do the discount. So you just call them directly and do it. But yeah, always do that. 
I bought a guitar this week and I, I, it was funny. I bought it from a private party, but he, uh, it's used. And, um, but what's funny about it was, you know, I did the same thing. I emailed him and I said, Hey, would you take a, this, this price? And he, he accepted it. Well, he, he countered with $25 more, which is very acceptable. And, uh, I did the deal. And then it was funny when I paid him through PayPal, uh, Reaver told me that I bought a guitar from him like a year and a half ago too. And I still have it. My music man right there, that blue music man right there. I bought it from, so it was kind of funny. I'm like, Oh, I, I dealt with him before small world. I mean, by about, so I'm now about two used guitars from the same guy in, uh crankshaft did a super chat for no reason thank you crankshaft i'm gonna be jumping around real quick uh robert Raymer says question posted before this okay <laughs> so hold on if, again i'm gonna okay dan brown dan brown's question is i have some high frets in a few spots causing fret buzz can i use a crown file to to them, uh, to, to them. Okay. It says down, but I understand what you mean. Or is there more steps to address? There is. Do not use a crowning file in my, in, in my opinion, I wouldn't do it. Um, you know, the, the problem I have with all this stuff. And again, I try to be frank and upfront about this, these kind of things with you guys. Look, I've done some crazy, stupid stuff. I mean, I've just done it. You know what I mean? To try, you know what I mean? I'm always experimenting. I don't take anything for face value. I wish I did because it causes more heartache than enjoy when you do that. But, uh, what I'm saying is, is, you know, the saying there's more than one way to skin a cat, whatever the hell that means. But anyways, my point is I have, you know, before I, you know, I had a, a tool shop or how did this stuff, of course I was doing like a lot of people, I was doing weird stuff. I mean, you know, trying stuff. Can you do it? You can do anything if you're determined enough to do it, but it's, it's not worth it. Don't, uh, don't, if you have high fret spots, I would not, um, Well, wait, let's back up. I maybe I'm reading this wrong because it says I have some. I was thinking something else. Okay, so let's be, be clear. Again, I'm reading this. I have some high frets. So I did a video, uh, sharpen my axe with a uh, slick guitar where I used a, a, a crowning file to crown just a couple frets very lightly. If you have a couple frets, like two or three in a couple spots, you could do that. Otherwise, if you have, so there's a rule. I, I, I don't know. Everybody has a different opinion. I'm trying to think like where I go from it. I think to me, it's a, it's a, I think I've talked about this before. It's a time issue. If I think I got a crown five to seven, eight frets, something like that, I'll be like, uh, well, not five, like six, seven, eight frets. I'll just go ahead and crown, crown everything and level it. You know what I mean? Level it and then crown it. Sorry. We say crown and level, but it's level and crown. You ever thought about that? I never thought of this right now. We actually level, then we crown, but it's called crown and level. We say it backwards. I wonder if there's a reason for that. So um, can you crown them? Uh, you know, um, can you just crown them? You can. It depends on how many frets. When I saw I have some high frets, I was thinking like a bunch. It depends. I don't know what some means. If it's three, go ahead and give it a whack uh, and, and and try it. Again, watch a video. Make sure you're reversed in what you're doing first. You know what I mean? Give it a try. Um, Again, all this stuff gets a little tough with me when you're doing these questions because I'm not looking at what you're talking about. I only have limited information and I don't know your skill set. So it's a lot easier sometimes when I'm doing a video showing you versus just suggesting that you do something. But it can be done. Uh, I can tell you right now in that video, I did it. So watch that video, Dan, and, and that'll give you a reference. Anything more than what I did in that video, you would definitely want to level than crown. I think I'm a little disconnected today. Let me, let me get, I was looking forward to this all week. I needed it, but I'm a little wacky too. So please guys, please be with, with me. Um, oh, great white sharks got a great question. It says, have you ever, have you ever dyed a rosewood neck darker or even a pale feral? I haven't done that. And I, I have many friends that have done that. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, ebony as well too, where they dyed the ebony. I don't like to do it. Um, I don't know why it's, I, I can't, it's my logic makes no sense to me. And I'm going to say it out loud right now. And it's just going to say, it's going to sound dumber than when I think it, which is I don't do it because I like the natural wood. Although I have a ton of guitars that are stained. So obviously I don't have a problem with staining anything, but there's something about not wanting to stain the guitar, the fretboard, even though, like I said, I know for a fact that I own guitars that I bought brand new that have stained fretboards because, you know, companies stain fretboards all the time. So the question is, have you ever done it? I've never done it because no one's ever asked me to do it as a, as a repair or as a mod. And uh, I've never done it for myself. Um, but if somebody asked me to do it, I mean, obviously it's staining wood. So, 
Um, but I do have friends that do it, uh, not only for customers, but they do it for themselves because they like it to look a certain way. They like consistency and stuff. Um, let's see. Hold on, guys. I, I, I'm going to grab a couple questions, but I also, I know with the super chats jumping around now and now, I just don't want to miss any of them. And I still didn't figure out which one he was saying, the one before him. And again, I apologize. That's why I said I'm warning you guys with the super chats. We'll see how this goes forward. Robert, um, Robert Raymer, it says question posted before this. I'm going to look real quick and I'm going to try. And I don't see the question, so I apologize. Hmm. All right. Um, what else? Hold on. Uh, let, while I read, I'll drink water. Um, Min, Min, I'm going to say Minjo. <laughs> Minjo 101 says, don't know why, no matter what I do, a Kemper doesn't feel the same as a real amp, even with a real cab. Should I take the risk with the new Fractal FM3? Will it be different? N again, you know, everybody's gonna have different various opinions. So this is mine. I don't think it'll be different. I have learned over the, you know, I've learned to like the new modeling tech, um, uh, you know, with, whether it's Fractal or it's Kemper or it's the Axe FX um, or it's uh, the, I have the G300 by Moore over here too as well. And then I have my, oh, it's in the other room now. I just took it out, but it was here like t five minutes before I started today. I had the uh, Helix Stomp. Um, to me, I, I again, you know, you set these guys nuts, these guys that love the Kempers and Axe FX crazy when you say this. Look, there, I feel the same way. There's no Kemper, uh, Axe FX, Fractal, um, which is the same thing, uh, Helix. None of that stuff feels like an amp to me. However, it they sound good, right? And it's a weird thing that we talk about. And I try to address everything so that the pros watching don't get upset and the, the newbies watching don't get confused, which is a hard audience to, to, to juggle. So let me put it to you in a way that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think personally, if you're buying a Kemper or an Axe FX or a Helix because you know you think it's going to be just the same thing as an amp and you're just a sucker if you buy an amp now, I think you're probably wrong. Um, and what I mean wrong is I don't mean you don't know what you're talking about. I think you're going to be wrong in your, in your hypothesis. In other words, you're going to be like, this is going to be the same. And yeah, I think there's, it's not going to be the same. Um, what I can tell you though, is that they are great for recording. And here's why I did an experiment and it was really interesting where I, what I did was I plugged into my amp using an AB box. And I ran the other line to the helix and I ran the helix into my interface and recorded with it. And the recording sounded fantastic. I could dare say it actually sounded better than I could get when I was miking the amp. But I, but if I played the Helix, I don't think I'd play the same way as I did through the amp. So there's a little bit of both. So what I'm saying is, is that if you're having the Kemper and it's not the same as the feel of the amp, um, sure, there's things, your settings, you need to really adjust this. This is where the know your gear adage comes in really a lot. Um, it took me forever to figure out the Helix. You know, if you guys, I'm sure they'll bash me for this. I, you know, it's supposed to be idiot proof. Well, then I'm an idiot because the Helix took me forever. It didn't take me ever to figure out how what the screen does. It didn't take me to figure out where to click and turn things and click and go and edit. And I can edit the stupid things. But to get the thing to sound the way I, I liked it, it took me forever. Forever. In fact, I was actually pissed off about how long it took. Cause I was doing that head thing in your head. We were like, man, you know how much fun I could have had when I was learning this thing. And it's nothing. It's Helix. It was obviously to me, it was easier than Kemper and Axe FX. I think sure. Just like anything, some people get straight A's without even trying. And some people get straight C's trying er as hard, as hard as they possibly can. There's going to be different things. But my point with this and these uh, effects units is, is that some people maybe through, uh, you know, just the luck of it, maybe intuition, they can uh, dial these things, things in fast. Some people don't care. They just use the, the uh, presets and think they sound great. I personally didn't like any of the presets. I didn't hate them. I just didn't like them. So, um, 
So that being said, I had to sit there and, and do exactly what everybody said, sit there and manipulate this and change the EQ and do this and tweak and then figure out where, to, where I'm supposed to stop tweaking this thing because maybe it sounds right and then go away from it, come back in a day or two and then see, does it sound as good as I thought it did a couple of days ago? And I think once you program one of these units, I think they're mas they, they're masterful. I think they sound great. I can totally see why everybody's on board with them. So my point to you is, I think it, before I would suggest to my friend, and I'm going to treat you like a friend, to get rid of the Kemper and get the Axe, the Axe FX, I would say spend more time in the Kemper. You've picked the bed, right? I think whether you got Kemper, Axe FX, or, or Line 6, I think a lot of people are going to argue which one's better of the three, and I, I think we could play that game all day long. You know, it's like a Marshall, Mesa Boogie, Offender, which one's better? I don't like the word better because they're all different, and there's there's things you can pull from each one. So same with these units. I think you can get a lot of a good sounds out of them. I think you should spend more time developing uh, the sounds that you have with the Kemper. I, I've heard friends who have Kempers sound just as good as anything else, and and same with Axe Specs and, and, and Helix. But I think it's a learning curve, and I definitely had the learning curve. Um, you know, I was about to make a video for, funny. I was about to do it. I had a video queued up. I had the title on my ra dry race boards where I write the titles of videos in it. And it was called why the helix is not for me. And it was going to be me explaining had that after one year of having the helix, why I'm never going to like the helix. And I did exactly what I'm preaching all the time. Know your gear. And I was like, all right, but do I really know this thing? Do I, did I really put all into this thing? And then I did. And I was getting upset because I'm like, man, I'm just wasting more time, you know, good time after bad. And, um, I think I got it. I nailed it. I'm very happy with it. In fact, I love it. Uh, would never pick it over any one of my amps, especially like my Princeton or something where I use all the time, but I could definitely see where it's a go-to now for so many things. So that's my speech on that. I hope it sparks some guys thought a lot of the stuff just spark and thought for you guys. Right. You know, uh, but a lot of you guys really have some, some good opinions about this stuff. So, you know, definitely put it out there, but I would say go, go for it. Um, uh, let's see real quick. Justin Mabe. <laughs> I already know this. I already saw it on your uh, Facebook. Justin, Justin said, I got my Charvel today. I, I saw it. In fact, the, the neck is super comfy. In fact, as soon as I saw it, I liked your top so much. I went on, uh, I went on uh, uh, Sweetwater and look, they have two in stock, one 7.9, one 7.8 pounds. And here's how silly I am as a person, as a, as a guitar player. I saw your guitar and I go, maybe I made the mistake. I got my black one, right? That's why I pulled it out. I was playing it because I saw yours and I go, oh, I got to get my black one out. So that was, and I was thinking, maybe, maybe it's time to sell the black one and get the blue one like Justin. And, uh, and uh, it was funny. I was like, well, both are slightly heavier than mine. Not, not a big deal, a few ounces. Um, but the one I liked better, the top on Sweetwater was 7.9 versus 7.8. And, and I was like, I don't need to do this. I like my black one right there. So yeah, I saw it. I'm glad you like it. The neck is great. In fact, um, I started filming this week, but of course, you know, like I explained, there was things um, I didn't finish it. I started the filming of the Charvel versus uh, AZ uh, and editing process and stuff. And uh, so hopefully that video will be enlightening for you. Waterford Giant did a super chat for no reason. I appreciate that so much. Uh, and then, um, hold on. Ah, Vincent, I got to do Vincent's question because he's he's busting my chops in a great way, Vincent. I need to, these are for me sometimes, especially when I'm doing the replay, replay index. He said, the Shiji tone control video, question mark. I, I will, for you, I will get it done. You know, I started getting those videos done in, a, in rapid succession and fire succession, getting that out. And then I, I just tapered off. Uh, I promise that it won't be the next video I do, you know, I mean, in filming, but uh, Vincent, I promise that it will be the next, uh, like any kind of repair tech video, which I'll, I'll do them uh, this week coming up, maybe even tomorrow. Um, you know, Fridays, I funny, I used to look forward to Fridays cause I, I took Saturday off. I always took every Saturday off, you know, uh, because I never had a Saturday off for like 20 years. I, I wish that was an exaggeration. It wasn't. It was, um, I worked six days a week for almost 20 years. And so when I started doing more of the YouTube stuff and, and I decided I'm going to back off other stuff and try to adjust my, I started at this point in my life, I got, I got to get a Saturday off. And so I started doing a weekly barbecue uh, with for friends coming over, you know, my friend Eric and, and Stephanie or, or Ralph or, you know, or Joe, people would come over and we just do stuff, you know, and, um, and, uh, we haven't done it since this uh, thing. So I just been working on Saturdays. Okay. So it's, it's uh, really sucks. So tomorrow I'll get it done. <laughs> Although the videos, you know, it's half work, half fun. Um, okay. What else? Uh,
Uh, Bobby Lopes, hope I'm saying that right, says, Phil McKnight, that's me. Best Freeman 21 amp for clean rock and metal. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm going to go off your first statement. You said clean, first thing you asked for. It. Best clean Freeman amp, 21 amp is the runt. I think the runt's clean is the best. The second best clean is going to be probably the uh, the uh, JJ Jr. And, um, and then the best rock tone um, to me is the Dirty Shirley. Uh, the clean on the Dirty Shirley is really great too. The Dirty Shirley is a hard amp for me to recommend to everyone because it's the amp I love because it's a one channel, does everything, and I use my volume control and a boost pedal, and I can get everything out of it I want, and I'm super happy, and I've never been happier, uh, of course, until they make the twin sister available, and then I'll have a two-channel Dirty Shirley, and then maybe I'll be happy with that, or maybe not. Maybe I'll go back to Dirty Shirley and not care, but my point is, um, uh, I would say if, if you want uh, clean rock and metal, uh, I would say go with the Jerry Contrail amp. Um, that that's like the runt on steroids. So you'll get all three of those tones out of it. The clean won't be as good as the runt, but it'll be almost as good. I mean, it's 90% there. The metal will be better than the runt because it actually does metal and the runt doesn't. And the rock is there. So go with the Jerry Contrell. It's a great amp. I, I don't think I could uh, go wrong recommending that of the, uh, of, of all the, all the amps. I mean, think about it this way. I have my PT 20 uh, for sale. I put it on reverb uh, because um, I've decided for me, it's the dirty Shirley and the JJ junior. Those are the two because the JJ junior does a little bit what the, the, the runt does and it does a little bit what the, uh, the PT does. And then the dirty Shirley is my other thing. So between those two amps, I feel like I got covered. So those are the two I recommend because those are the two I like. Okay. Uh, hold on. And if I'm missing a super chat, I will jump around, but right now I'm also looking for, uh, just questions and topics you guys want to do. Uh, but Tony Goyburn's got a, a, a super chat and a question. He said he just added the Duesenberg trim system. Ah, yeah, yeah. To, uh, to his uh, Harley Benton. Well, HBDC 580. I'm assuming that's a Harley Benton. Uh, thanks for the video. Yes, it's super easy. Yeah, it was super easy. It says up, I updated my YouTube channel video after the DC 580. Uh, it for the year. Guitar Kitchen on YouTube. Oh, okay, cool. Check out Guitar Kitchen. Especially right now. You know what I mean? What's funny is, is I'll tell you guys a little fun thing. I really appreciate being one of the channels that, you know, you have subscribers and you get content stuff, but you know, I spend most of my time watching small channels. I've been, uh, in fact, I'm always like nervous because I'll, I want to put comments and thumbs ups and I'll sometimes put comments and I hate it because it draws attention. I think it's good because then you see a, a, maybe a larger channel. I always feel good when a larger channel says like, good job, Phil. And I'm like, whoa. You know, hey, so and so said good job. Um, so maybe I try to pass that on too. Um, but um, but what's great is I watch a lot of smaller channels because the bigger channels, sure, you get a little bit more polished look. There's a little bit more of that, and of course, they you know the the bigger your channel, the more it gets easier to get the gear to do videos. But the smaller guys, the smaller channels, uh, is really what the community and you know of, of YouTube is about. You know what I mean? So uh, so check them out, and of course, uh, I'll check out Guitar Kitchen. I might have already checked out your channel. It sounds so familiar, Guitar Kitchen. So, um, but if not, I will subscribe today, and if you guys can check it out too, and uh, hopefully it's good. You know, um, Tony, the, the unfortunate part of what you did is you're smart enough to know to ask, uh, let you, everybody know about your channel, but, uh, but you better be ready because, and not everybody is going to tell you it's great. Um, so hopefully it is. <laughs> uh, 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 let's see. Okay, so Hurricane, Hurricane Moon says, as a guy who has got young kids and a wife with MS, I can't really gig these days. Okay, gotcha. I, I gotcha. I'm okay. Uh, so Man Cave is VST plugins and bias effects. It's it, is it for me? Sounds better than any physical amp uh, effects, in my opinion. And I think again, it depends on. And uh, so, Hurricane, what I want to do is, I want to, I want to agree and argue with you at the same time. That's right. Have your cake and eat it too. I will agree that I feel like the proper way, the terminology that we should use is it's not about saving people's feelings. You know, not everybody's that sensitive, man. <laughs> but it's about the proper terminology. I like things like it's the right fit for me. 
it fits my needs, it inspires me. Those terms mean a lot to me when people use them. I like the Helix because it fits my needs. I like the bias effects because it inspires me. I like an, a JCM 800 or an old 100 watt Plexi because I feel connected to it, right? Those terms are different than this is better than that. And it's not about like your kindergarten teacher saying, don't say better and we all gotta get along. It's, there's nothing to do with that. It's about understanding what we're talking about so that other people can understand, right? What I think is funny is I find that I can, in the right mood, plug into a multi-unit uh, like a like a like a helix, right? Like the helix or the more G three hundred, and I'm inspired by all the different sounds. I, I go, oh, that's a weird sound. That's a weird effect, and I start going, and there, it takes me down a road I never gone before. And then sometimes that actually hinders me. It's too much crap. I can't find one good tone that I'm just connecting with. Um, sometimes I just want to plug into a clean amp or a light overdrive amp or maybe a high gain amp. You know what I mean? But usually it's a it's a clean amp, and just get something out of it and, and have a moment. You know what I mean? Because sometimes for me, it's about, there's something really magical and it could be just, you know, memories age about flipping the on switch on a tube amp and waiting. Believe it or not. It's funny to me. I, I really believe this is weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing. I don't, I, I, I could turn on a computer and it frustrates me waiting 10 seconds for it to boot up. When I turn on the helix, I actually get annoyed waiting for it to think for a second. I'm like, ah, oh, Think stupid, just start already. When I turn on a tube amp and I wait for a, the sound to come in, that's actually one of my favorite parts. Like the something magical is about to happen. So if you told me that it's in your head that tube amps aren't real, I disagree, but I'm not naive enough to not think that you might be possibly right. So I'm glad Hurricane Moon that that inspires you and and, and that's what works with you because I think that's great. And I think there's uh, there's value to both sides. But I, I, I find now, I think everyone is, your needs is what's exactly important. Is like, hey, for my needs, which is at home with kids, you know what I mean? I'm not gigging. This stuff gives me every sound I want. It's unlimited uh, potential. You know what I mean? Think about this. Here's something I, I could tell you is great. Uh, wh why I said I, I, my statement earlier, which is very important, that I said that I'm I've learned to really like the multi effects units, the the modelers, you know, right? What right? The um, the helix, whatever you want to call this stuff. I find that as although the tone junkie in me, you know, the the person is like, oh, I need that tone. Uh, that's not as fulfilled as much, but my uh, desire to want to create music record goes up because it becomes so much easier to just with an interface record, put the headphones on, put up the drum tracks, set up a baseline, start putting stuff together. My creation mode goes crazy with this stuff where normally miking up the amp, setting up that stuff that actually slows that process down. So there's good things about both. That's really what's nice on a side note. So, you know, uh, bias effects reached out to me and asked me if I was interested in reviewing the spark and that didn't come up on this podcast, but it came up on the live patron show. Everybody was asking what I thought about that. And I said, you know, Hey, I, 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 you know, I hear good things, but then I don't hear good things. So very cool. Um, and, uh, they did the coolest thing ever. I want to thank Chris. If he's, uh, you know, I don't know if he watches the live show or if he watches anything, but if he's out there, I want to thank him because he did the coolest thing ever, which is they offered to send it to me to let me check it out. I love it when companies talk to me like that. You know what I mean? When it can be just as simple as, hey, we want to send this to let you check it out. And then if I decide to do content, if everything happens after that, it's great. But first, just let me check it out. Let me get a sense of it. And uh, and so that was great. And so I'm excited about that. And of course, either way, I'll probably talk about it. <laughs> but it's just really nice to know. It kind of changes the vibe if it's not something like, hey, we'll send this, but we expect you to make a video. And then you feel like, you know, you got to make this content or there's some kind of arrangement going on. Um. In a nutshell, says what half stack should I get for around 450 US dollars? Whichever one you can afford. <laughs> what I will tell you is uh half stacks are are the thing to buy. If you're looking for a deal, you go on Craigslist because those guys don't want to ship a 412 cabinet to nowhere. Or you find there's there are a few of them. You go on uh reverb and you find a couple of those crazy people that will ship you a 412 cabinet. There are some people out there. I sometimes I gasp when I'm like looking at 412 and it's like $300 412 cabinet and shipping is like 50 bucks. You're like, this guy is crazy. 
<laughs> it's not going to cost 50 bucks. It's going to cost way more. And it's not worth the time. It takes to box that up and take it to the, to the, to the shipping, uh, you know, people, the UPS stuff, but, um, no 450, you know, yeah, there's deals to be out there. You could probably get yourself 450, get yourself a good PV rig, get yourself, you know, um, you know, you get a solid state marshal. Depends on what you're looking for, but you can find it. So which one should you do? Uh, get, I don't know, whichever one you can afford that you like, but you will find a deal. Uh, what else? Okay. So we have Michael Flores. He says thoughts on the Vox Valtronics AD 100 VT. <laughs> Say that twice fast. Keep up the good work. I just recently discovered your channel and I've learned uh, much. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much uh, for, for giving me the compliment. Uh, you know, obviously it feels good. Um, the, uh, thoughts on the Vox Valvetronics. Um, I like the Valvetronics stuff fine. I think we've talked about that maybe on a, on a live show before, uh, the Vox, there's two brands for some reason. I've never done any videos on the channel and there's no reason. And I've had people call me out on it and I, I, I and, and I don't have a response cause it's like, and it's always orange and Vox. It's like, Hey Phil, do you not like Vox? Do you not like orange? Why don't you guys check that out? And it literally, it's because I uh, don't own any and no, those companies never reached out for anything. And I've had no opportunities to do so with either one of those companies. Um, so that's, that's the main thing. I think I'm more of a Vox guy than I am an orange guy, but I don't know that for sure. And um, so, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm very little. I've done very little, very little. I've never was an orange uh, a dealer, so I've never dealt with orange, but I was a Vox dealer um, when Vox was with Marshall. So, uh, and then, uh, uh, when that separated out, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't carry Vox anymore, but, um, and so, I mean, it's a very dated stuff. I couldn't even tell you all the Vox stuff. I think, you know, obviously the original night train, stuff like that, that's how long ago it was, but, um, but yeah, I, I what I've played of them, I liked them. Uh, Al says my GNL ASAT classic. I'm going to say asshat cause I got to say it. His GNL asshat. <laughs> <laughs> classic tuners tunes perfectly open and at the 12th fret between the frets it plays sharp when it's set uh when it was set up thoughts i gotta read that again his gnl classic tunes perfectly open gotcha and the 12th fret which is what you want between the frets it plays sharp it was set up thoughts and what effect does changing the gauge of strings have on the intonation um the gauge of strings can change the intonation depending on how extreme it is uh you know it's usually you want to do a micro adjustments right i mean think about intonation as being micro adjustments in the first place little adjustments if you go from nines to tens or tens and nines do you have to set your intonation yes and no Sometimes it doesn't have an effect. It has probably has to do with how high the action is, the type of guitar. There's all kinds of factors. Generally speaking, if I set a, take a set of nines and put tens, or you know, or maybe go tens to elevens, you know, you're going one gauge in one direction. Uh, I think I couldn't tell you 50% of the time. I just feel like I'm just making up numbers, but I feel like a big percentage of the time I've never had to make any adjustments to the intonation. So there's a, there's a case on that. Um, the thing that you're talking about where it plays a little sharp. When it was set up, well, and it was set up. Your thoughts? My thoughts are, if it was set up and it's still acting up, uh, well, obviously you can always take it back. But also, um, you can always make the adjustments too. Don't be afraid to mess with the intonation. There's a trick, and I've showed it to you guys, and I did a fast intonation video. I've talked about it in the Sharp Max videos, which is, you know, just make sure you know where your starting point is. Let me give you an example. And I'm going to tell you this as a guitar tech, and not every guitar tech is going to be the same. But we're going to argue that you have a guitar tech that's logical, okay? Let's say I set up a customer's guitar, your guitar. Let's say I set up that a the ASAT, the guitar you're talking about. Let's say I set that up. I, I made the adjustments to the bridge. I made the adjustments to the neck. Everything's fine. I send it home with you, and you just discover that the intonation is slightly out in some way. Now, we we know that my setup, my adjustments are, 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 are a problem, right? Because you're having the issue. What I would have no problem with is if somebody was to measure you know, the saddles, like the distance from, let's say the back of the saddle to the back of the bridge, or, you know, just find the exact spots where the saddles are, mark them, write that all down. And then you make adjustments, you fix it. Well then great. You fixed it. If for some reason you can't fix it and it gets worse, you can put it back exactly to where it was and you bring it back to me. I don't know why I would be like, you moved it, but then put it back. Well, now I'm voiding your warranty because you touched something. 
it, if it's exactly where I was left it. So that's what I'm saying. That's There's nothing wrong with trying to make the adjustments yourself. The intonation is not as hard as, it's not hard to do. It's sometimes tricky with the guitar. Sometimes the guitars play a little cat and mouse with you, but don't be afraid of, of adjusting those saddles back and forth, especially lightly. When you're talking about, you know, what you're talking about, you're talking about slight. Um, and then also too, you know, even uh, guitar players, like uh, Tommy Emmanuel and stuff, you know, they'll tell you sometimes intonation gets overrated. You know what I mean? People get too crazy with the tuners and stuff. I'm not saying they're right. I'm just saying just, just also one of the things I think about is, yeah, I want my intonation, my guitar dead on, but I also, if I'm playing guitar and it sounds great and it's playing great and I don't hear the chords out and, but the tuner, the strobe tuner is telling me something crazy. Sometimes I don't really stress over that again. Like I said, uh, you know, if it's, if it's not a problem, don't fix it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Sometimes I've had this, and I, I just want to be very clear. I've had a customer have me do a setup. It plays great. They agree. It sounds great. They agree. Um, it's intonated when they play. They agree. But then they put it on their strobe tuner and they're like, it's off. <laughs> I'm like, eh, well, it's off, but it sounds right. You know what I mean? And so we can keep chasing this small imperfection, or, you know, if we're all, it's fine. It's fine. Again, customer's always right. So if I have to chase it some more, I'll chase it some more. But I'm always going to suggest, hey, if it's right, don't stress too much. Because sometimes we fixate on that. Something, you know, the biggest fixation that happens, all the guitar techs watching this will know what I'm talking about. One of the things funny is uh, I'll have a customer walk up and they'll go, and uh, I learned this. Oh, I'm going to give you guys a tip, especially you guys new guitar techs. I'm going to give you a tip on how to handle a customer who is giving you a really strange problem. And this is what I mean by this. You, they'll play the guitar and they go, see, the guitar plays fine, but look what happens when I take my my pick and I hit the opening as hard as I can. Bang! It's buzzing. And I go, what song are you playing? And they go, no, it's not a song. I When I hit it, it goes bang! Bzz, and you go, but what song are you playing? <laughs> if you're going to try and find the problems of the guitar, you will find them, <laughs> right? But if you're playing for a hundred different songs and it doesn't come up, then it's not a problem. And they go, yeah, but if I do this, it does it. I understand why that would bug you. <laughs> it's almost like the, Hey, my elbow hurts when it does this. Well, don't do that. I don't want to be that guy, but I also, I try to, and of course I have to, you know, I have to do whatever that you guys say. So if you guys want me chasing that for the next hour, I chase it, but it is make me laugh sometimes. I'm like, I always ask people, whenever they have a problem with anything on the guitar, I always ask them what song, or I ask them to play the song where it's having the problem. And what you sometimes will discover, and this is why I say it, it's a great strategy to open a dialogue about you know something. They'll go, well, it's not any song. It's just when I do this. See, when I put this finger here and I do this, <laughs> and I'm like, right, but it, when you're playing, it's fine. Yes, but when I do this, Oh, okay. Well, we got to decide what do we really care about? Is that what really matters to you? Cause it, if it matters to you, it matters to me, but let's all agree what matters first. You know what I mean? Uh, because sometimes I get it, you know, they don't realize, you know, that chasing that problem could cause other problems or sometimes you can't fix that. So just something to think about the little thing. Anthony says, Phil looking to build a strat style, most likely warm off parts and preferably DiMaggio loaded pick guard. Any recommendations? Uh, the area set. Um, so I've I, I, I I've been talking to the DiMaggio guys. They've been really great. Uh, Wilson at DiMaggio has been hooking me up, uh, sent me some pickups. That's how I got the Steve I pickups, which is great. We were able to do that in a video. Um, the uh, single coil pickups are really what I'm most interested in with uh, Seymour Duncan. Or with, uh, sorry, did I say Seymour Duncan? I mean DiMaggio. Please can't understand. I mean DiMaggio. DiMaggio, DiMaggio uh, is obviously they're in New York there's problem shipping stuff right now. So that's what's going on. So recommendations. Um, I like the area set, but I would really like to try them out and stuff. And I don't have any DiMaggio pickups to try out and tell you about um, in, the, in the single wheel sets. So I can't tell you, but I can tell you, I like DiMaggio's and I like Warmoth. So I like where you're going with this. I like your thought process. Warmoth also isn't, I believe is not shipping. They're also closed right now. So I don't know. I, again, please check their websites. Anything I say that's closed, please check their websites. You know what I mean? Because if they open and I'm mistaken, I don't want them not getting any business because I said something. That's my intent here. I'm just going off the information. And of course, some of this information is only a week old, but still in, in today's day and age, a week could be, um, you know, a long time. So, uh, but I like your logic. Two, two brands I really like. Chuck M Music says, hey, Phil, I love my tube amps in the studio, but... Uh, my bad backs makes the gig, uh, digital. Yeah. I feel like all, uh, everything has, uh, a, its use. 
Yeah, sending good vibes your way. Thank you, man. And I agree. That's what I'm saying. It's a tool. These are all tools. Look at all these stupid guitars behind me. These are all tools, right? I mean, okay. So I cop to it because I always got to cop to everything. Maybe two or three of them are because I like colors. <laughs> you know, I got double two strats because I like two colors of strats. But the reality is everything's got a purpose. Some of it's like, look, I don't play this Wolfgang, this PV. I just wanted one because it's purple. Can't tell right now because it looks black. I wanted a purple Wolfgang. PV made one. It's cool. I know it's a good it's a good guitar to keep because it's worth what I paid for it used and it'll be worth that or more as years go by because you know it's a supply and demand thing. There isn't any more PV Wolf Gains made in the USA. So that's the thing. But like next to it is the Dana Electro. That guitar has a sound. I play that guitar for a sound because it's a tool. I want that sound versus let's say the Strat or the other guitar. Same thing where I play, play the Princeton versus my EVH 5150 versus my Archon, right? Different sounds. So different tools, different things. So yeah, I, I Chuck, I like where your mind's at, right? Uh, I think uh, if you hate digital, good for you. If you hate tube amps and you're like, they're a scam and digital is the way to go, good for you. But to, for me, it's more open than that. You know what I mean? It's more like, okay, what am I doing? Especially like sometimes I got to be, you know, a gear review channel and I got to think like that. Sometimes I got to play with a, a band and I got to think like that. Sometimes I just want to enjoy myself. I want to think like that. And I don't want to be so narrow minded that I don't, I don't acknowledge that there's things that can make my life easier. Like I'm really, really, really interested in this spark amp because I'm not a huge digital amp guy. I'm more of a solid state amp guy, which is why I like the katana. I'm really curious about that. Um, I don't think it's going to be a problem, but I plan to do, uh, I would like to do minimum of two videos with the Spark. I'd like to do the Spark video and then eventually a, a, a comparison of the Spark and uh, Katana, but not a who, which one's better, but which one, you know, who's, which, who would benefit from each one. I'm trying to do more of the comparison videos where it's not like a winner thing. And I never did it that way, but I know how sometimes the audience kind of fights it into that. Like, yeah, totally. I love Phil. I love the Harley Benton and the PRS sucks. And you guys get so into it. I'm like, I love that because I kind of get that way too. But I'm like, man, really should, should be more like, this fits this guy's needs or gals. This fits the other person's needs. Let's look at it that way. Um, not because, again, I'm trying to get lovey-dovey with peace and stuff. And <laughs> Although if everybody needs a hug, they get any hug. But my point is, I'm just trying to say, hey, I'm curious. I want to see a video where I'm curious. Um, or where people, you know, get the information. So that their curiosity gets taken care of like mine. Um, what else do we got? What else do we want to talk about? Did I cover everything? I was going to make a list of stuff and in my day didn't go the way I thought I was going to do. Um, the another thing that's not worth, there's two things that are, that are mentioning worth at the back end since the, a lot of the diehards hang out for this long, long in the, in the show. Um, something happened on Facebook. That's worth noting. If you see my face, uh, on Facebook, uh, playing a orange wood acoustic, uh, for a company, I've already filed a complaint with Facebook. Um, Hopefully, in fact, let me look. I just saw, I might have an email from Facebook. Nope, I don't. Um, and, and I'm double checking right now before I say anything because it would be nice if Facebook's already emailed me. Let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's like on Star Wars. Wait for it. Okay, uh, nothing back from Facebook yet. So uh, what's the deal with that? Uh, simple. Uh, so the, a company, it's a creepy shady company who created a facebook page like three days ago is selling some kind of they're selling taylor guitars for 90 bucks and gibson les pauls for 60 bucks i'm not making this stupid stuff up of course it's all a scam who knows if it's just out there to steal your money or if they're selling you chinese knockoff crap or whatever their deal is but whatever it is which makes no sense they took a clip of my video and put it in there um and it's me playing an orange wood. I think they're not even selling. Uh, I asked them to take it down. They didn't do it. I've uh, tried to put comments, but they delete my comments. I've now requested Facebook to please remove the ad campaign. Uh, so I'm just letting you guys know if you see that. Thank you. Uh, everybody sent me messages this morning. Definitely was the thing I woke up to. Like, hey, they're using your, your video. Uh, thank you guys so much. That's great. I was able to use that. I responded to as many of you guys as possible saying thank you for that. Um, especially since a lot of you guys told me about it, but then got, a lot of you guys had links and stuff. Thanks for that. That was cool. Uh, something to notate. The other thing that's worth notating, I had a conversation with my patrons this week about the Chrome shirts, and I just want to let you know what's going on with that. In fact, a lot of you guys probably won't know uh, what's going on with that. Um, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned that uh, Teespring did a limited run of Chrome Know Your Gear shirts. What happened with that uh, uh, that campaign was Teespring came to me and said, hey, would you like to do a Chrome logo Know Your Gear shirt? I said, yes, that sounds cool. Not Normally, which is my fault, uh, what I do when they offer that is I buy a sample. I was not able to buy a sample. So usually I would buy a sample of the shirt, 
get it, check it out, and go, yeah, it's cool, run the campaign. In this case, what happened was Teespring ran the campaign. I didn't have control of the campaign because it was like a special chrome foil finish and only certain you know, companies like me or certain entities got, you know, this, this special offer to have their logo put in this. And then on top of that, I had to sell 10 minimum to even do the campaign. So even if like 10, you know, eight of you bought it, they wouldn't even do it unless 10. So long story short, uh, I went with it and, um, I, uh, and, uh, I got my shirt and a couple of them got a shirt. It's this gray logo. It's, it's crap. It's not, it's not, it's not a bad shirt. I actually like it. Some people are, a couple of you guys have been so cool. They're like, actually, I actually like the shirt. I actually like the shirt too. I like the, the, the cloth on it and I like the logo, the gray. In fact, I wore it in the Telecaster video I did yesterday. Um, however, it's not what they promised and it's not what I promised. So here's why I'm telling you guys this. If you bought one of those shirts, whether you're happy with it or not, could you please send Teespring a message saying that it's not what you ordered? Uh, I am dealing with Teespring right now. They have so far been decent right there's no issues like i don't want to say they're doing great because they're not do they haven't done anything yet but they're not arguing with me i told them that this is unacceptable everybody needs either to get a refund or another replacement shirt of of what they actually expect to get um i want to let you guys know that i'm handling that i will let you know exactly what i told the patrons i'm giving teespring one week to refund your money or to send you the shirt they promised or at least notify me that those things are being happened. Otherwise, I will refund your money out of my own pocket. Uh, this campaign was not a campaign where I made money. I made $64 total all in on all those shirts because I discounted the shirts. That was, again, I did a bunch of dumb things. It happened. First, I let them do a campaign without getting a sample. Even though they said no, I should have just said no then too. The other thing I did dumb was I discounted it even though they told me they were going to charge me more to do this shirt because that's the other factor in this problem too. They charged more. So even if people are like, oh, it's just like the gray shirt, it's fine. Well, they charged me more. And so, cause they charged me more and I discounted, um, almost all the shirts the patron bought, they cost me a dollar. What I mean by this, every time somebody bought a shirt, it cost me a dollar, not complaining, not complaining. It's not, it's not worth complaining about what's that 30 bucks. Um, for it, was like 30, 40 shirts sold. So 30, 40 bucks is what it cost me. Cause what was happening was there was no profit. And I apparently sold them for a dollar less than what they were charging me for the shirts. Doesn't matter. The point is you're covered either way. I just want to let you guys know that a lot of you have a, a lot of people are not complaining about it. If you're not complaining about it, it's fine. That doesn't matter. The point, what I'm trying to say is I'm in the trust game. That's kind of what I sell here on the channel. You know, that hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what's going on. A, a lot of you guys are like, hey, I bought the shirt to support the channel. It's not about the shirt. I understand that. I appreciate all the nice things you guys have said with the comments, but really what I want you to understand is that I really want you to buy the next shirt and the next thing. And I would like you to, you know, when I suggest something, I'd like you to, to feel like you could make a decision without, uh, you know, without worrying about the stupid crap that might happen. So I'm just telling you, it will be taken care of. And, uh, I'll update you guys next Friday. Well, we'll talk about it next Friday. So, um, but like I said, if you have a shirt and you're not happy with it, let them know if you're, uh, uh, if you have a shirt and you're happy with it, let them know it's still the wrong shirt or don't, if you don't want to let them know, I understand. Don't worry. I'm on it is what I'm saying. Uh, so I'll take care of it. The, uh, <laughs> I said, but literally losing your shirt off the back. You know, it's kind of funny when they were they were selling because usually I get a little thing and it says sold shirt and it's like six dollars. You're like, oh cool, this was like sold shirt negative dollar. I'm like, what did I do wrong? Because again, I wasn't able to adjust the campaign like I normally does. So it's it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Trust me, if this is the worst thing that happens, <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> right. It's like, a, it's, this is, it wasn't even a bad day for me for that. Um, it's just, you know, I just want to make sure you guys are taken care of. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? Um, oh, a couple things I should tell you guys, a couple of other announcements too. The, the tone King, uh, tone King is going to be on tonight. I don't know when you can check that out, but the reason I'm telling you that is the, uh, the owner of BC rich or the head of BC rich will be on there. I thought that was cool. So you guys are in, I saw you guys just talking about BC rich. They'll be on there talking. So you can check that out. And, uh, so that's really cool. Anything you guys want to talk about before we go, we got a few more minutes. We can go a little, keep going. Um, Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Matt's like Phil fighting for consumer justice. You know, what's funny was it's not, it's not about that. It was just, uh, when I got the shirt, <laughs> I wasn't upset. I was just like, this isn't Chrome. This is great. 
<laughs> Although what's funny is uh, how I, they were the, the the people at Teespring were like, are you sure it's not right? And here's what's funny. I actually, because I have the gray logo shirt, I wore it, I grow, wore the gray logo shirt in the uh, in last week's video. And then I wore the new Chrome shirt in this week's video, which is gray. And I sent them both videos saying, look, these shirts are identical. And one is gray and one is Chrome. You could argue that it's, you know, maybe we were mistaken in what we thought Chrome was, but you can't argue that those are the same shirts and they're both gray. <laughs> so, uh, yes, <laughs> Dylan says, tell them to get their shirt together. Yeah, so, you know, they seem pretty cool so far. Uh, I, I have a contact with them and she's she seemed shocked and uh, concerned that it's not what we we were, you know, thinking it was. So so that's good. So good. That's uh, that's hopefully what they that they get their, their money for us. I, I, I send you guys to buy stuff and then they ship it and sell it and take care of you. And it should be a symbiotic relationship. So hopefully it works, but I can't recommend them if they don't do good work. Um, oh no, Tito did a Chrome shirt phone. Don't do the Chrome shirt fund. No, no, please don't keep in mind. When I say I'm sending the money out, please understand. I sell shirts. I sell it just, it's just, it's just part of business. Okay. It's just part of business when you do stuff like this. I, you know, I've been in business a long time. That's things you have to understand. You know, uh, shrinkage is what they would call it, right? There's all kinds of things. I sell shirts. Uh, you guys buy stuff all the time, merch all the time. Trust me. Um, in fact, so you know, uh, you know, that's why I said don't worry about stuff like that. I appreciate everything you guys do, but don't don't worry about that stuff. Um, let's find something that's cool to end on. Um, what else? Uh, what else do we got? You guys got one more question before we go? One more thing you want to talk about? Anything? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, oh, okay, here it is. Great White Shark says, have you had a chance to check out the Silver Sky with Mabel Neck? I played one at the NAM show. I was uh, able to, to pick one up in the morning. Uh, we went in one day before the NAM show started, you know, um, sometimes we didn't have, I didn't have the right pass. Sometimes if you have a vendor pass, you get an early, I didn't have the media pass, but sometimes if you play, you know, I played dumb, you know, I went into the security guard and I'm like, he's like, you can't go in. And I'm like, they said I can go in. And then he, you know, he let me through. So we went, uh, and hit as many booths as we can privately, you know, to try to touch gear before people got there. And you know what I mean? And so Silver Skies was one of the things I checked out. So what I can tell you about it is I can't tell you how it sounds. You know what I mean? I imagine it's not going to sound much different. But uh, what I can tell you is it's slightly different feel to the neck. There's there's no shine to the neck. It's like satin almost. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit less. I thought Nathan told me that they changed that. So the, the Rosewood uh, John Muir neck, the one I have behind me right there, Nathan told me that it's it's like a it's, it's a lacquer. They shoot it and then they sat uh, they sand it satin or whatever. Um, and the new one they don't shoot it at all or it's just shot you know something different or it, it or it's lacquer and that was Paul. It doesn't matter. It just it just I'm just letting you know uh, if you've played the rosewood one and I have it's got a little bit more shine to it and the maple one has more of a satin kind of finish is what I kind of de detected when I played it. Otherwise they felt very very close and some the same to the point where I can tell you this. Um, if you had one of each, I could see why you could like each one differently. You know what I mean? Like I liked a little bit of this feel and I liked a little bit of that feel. I like Rosewood, so it didn't really matter. What I really liked was the new colors. Uh, so Tyler says, where can you buy Shiji guitars? As far as I know, Shiji is not shipping guitars right now. And that was off his Facebook thing. Um, and I, I think it has something to do with the virus and not being able to manufacture the guitars. So I don't know. Um, he didn't really say a lot and I didn't really investigate a lot. I just saw that he said they, they're, the sales are offline right now. And then Robert, Robert says, oh, cause so Robert, is this the question you were talking about? Phil, what's going on with your Stumac tool packs? So, um, I talked about this to the patrons. I think I talked about it to you guys. Stumac had reached out to me and asked me if I was interested in curating a tool a pack is good toolkit. Um, what that means by curating is I, I don't think it's exclusive to me. I think they're going to try this as a uh, 
potential thing. Like it seems like a great idea, right? You basically find a different bunch of different people, maybe some luthiers, some some repair guys. You know, obviously guys like me do social media and do kind of how to fun videos and stuff. Um, and you basically say, hey, what are the tools that you think people should have? And then they would put those together in in a kit and then give you a discount, right? And that'd be the logic. And then the idea would be it's a good start pack. And in my case, um, it's not for sure yet, but what I discussed was two, like an A and a B pack. And then the idea would be you'd buy a P pack is basic. B pack would be the complete kit, you know, kind of thing, because I wanted to hit a certain price point because their stuff is expensive. But the great thing I can tell you about the A pack is, is it's literally no joke what I've been using every day for 15 years minimum. In other words, the same tools that I think, not only do I think you should have them, it's what I use every day. Um, and so I told them that's what I like to do, especially since I can do something that's really cool, which is show you guys my, my actual ones. I have all the new ones, right? But I have my ones I bought 15, 20 years ago. So, I mean, they're ratty, you know what I mean? So it's like cool to see. I think that's cool. So when I tell you like, I like this do Mac tool, you know, it's not like, Oh sure. You like them cause they sent you one or whatever. It's going to be like, no man, like this, look at this thing. It's still going. Look how much I beat it up every day. So, um, so that's what it, what it would be. So I haven't heard back, obviously everything moves slow in, the, in this time right now, but it'd be cool. I'm excited about doing that. Um, and then what's great about that is, um, I, the reason I liked it, which is what I was, uh, you know, telling them is what's great is you guys could go to Stumac and buy it. That's cool. Save a little scratch. Cause you know, they're expensive. The other thing that's nice is, um, you could reverse engineer it. In other words, if you don't have the scratch for Stumac or don't want to invest in those tools, which I understand you could just take the list and go crazy with it, go and find them, you know, the, the cheaper versions and stuff. I mean, obviously, you know I mean? It's up to you. It's your money. You should spend it how you feel the right way. I just want you to have the information. And I want the information to be based on what I actually do, not, you know, some crap, you know, hey, you should buy this because it's good. It's like, it's nicer when I can go, yeah, this is what I use. So, I mean, you know. Um, uh, Richard says, happy, happy weekend, Phil. You made mine, you make my guys a uh, weekend too. Because like I said, especially right now, I feel like this is normal. Friday feels normal. I don't know what day the week is every day except for Friday anymore. I feel like, like it's Friday. <laughs> so Sean P says, do you still use the Katana? Any suggestions for a tutorial to use, uh, use the built-in pe boss pedals? So I have the Katana Mark II, the new one. I bought it in January uh, at a guitar center at, at the NAMM show. So I had a, I needed an amp for the hotel. And I, I go, wow, I was talking about buying a Katana again. Um, so do I use the Katana? I still do. Uh, cause I just got it again. I had, I had a gap where I didn't have the first one. I got the 50 watt. Now the first one I reviewed or the only ones I reviewed, the only one I reviewed was the first one was a hundred watt one. And I liked it. I just kind of felt like I wanted the smaller one. And a lot of people are like, but the, you know, the bigger one had more features. And, and to me about the, I just want, in fact, I regret, uh, I'm going to be honest. I regret buying the 50 watt. I wish I bought the head because now I started thinking about going, the head is the same size as the 50 watt but it's cut in half and has two small speakers. So it'd be great for practice. And I could throw it on a cabinet if I wanted to. So I kind of regret that. Um, I've been thinking about eventually selling the, the 50 watt and then getting the, the head next. Um, and then I could do a shootout between that and the, and the black spirit, but he's in Kittner that I'm looking at. Cause I like that amp too, but I'm curious to see how they, they compare. Um, but do I still use it? Yeah, I really, I really, that's why I'm curious about this, uh, spark, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the spark unit because from bias effects, because you know, the Katana is, I mean, I hate to say it. It's the kind of thing. Uh, it's a big deal. Um, so back to your tutorial, use the boss. I have never, never used anything on the Katana other than basic function. So I like use, I think I use the Brown sound for, for distortion. And then I go to like the clean tone and, and that's it. And then I use my volume control on my guitar and a little delay and a little reverb. I, I literally use nothing of that amp. Um, in fact, and the reason is, is because it, just because it's a digi it has digital effects and because it has all these features, I still can't use it any differently. Than I would use like a, just a really regular basic tube amp. So I use the same, but I, what I do do, what I do do, what I do is I do run pedals through it. And I think the Katana takes pedals well, very well. In fact, I haven't done any pedal reviews in a long time. And I told you guys, if I do pedal reviews, when I do pedal reviews, I'll run it. I'll always make sure I do it through a tube amp and then the Katana going forward. And you guys thought that was a great idea. And I did too. And then no pedals. The only, and the only pedals I bought lately, I can't review 
um, because like one in particular, which I'm not going to mention right now, I bought it used. There's literally zero for sale on reverb right now. So if I tell you about it, all it's going to do is drive the price up, which I think is already inflated and you can't find one. So, um, so we'll see. Uh, me print Z imprint, not me imprint Z imprints imprints. Have you commented on, uh, Oh, have you commented on Evertunes or tried them? Um, I have messed with Evertunes, but I have not done a full review of one. Uh, I talked about this before, uh, the fact that there's just, I don't have a guitar that has one in there and I don't deal with any companies that have Evertunes in there. I know the new beast riches have it. I know the LTD has it. Um, if I was going to get an Evertune, I'd probably get either a Solar or a LTD with Evertune in it. That would be, that's the two guitars on my radar. Um, and that might come into play right now. Um, what I mean is, uh, you know, I buy guitars, you know, uh, just like anybody else at, at some kind of, you know, regular collectors, some kind of like, I have a plan, you know what I mean? Like how I'm going to buy them and what, why, um, LTD has definitely been a guitar. It's been on my radar for a long time. If I was going to ever tune, I'd probably get an LTD or a Solar, like I said. So we'll see. But I'd like to do a review talking about it. Um, I can't. What? Hold on, hold on. Oh, this is fun. Let's play a game. Eric has a question. I like the question. Let me take a drink of water. And he says, can you help me with this pedal order? Uh, I have no idea where to start. Okay, so he's got, here's the pedal order. He has the Spark Boost. I have the Spark Boost. I like it. It's my one of my favorite boosts. Uh, Spark Boost, Octafuzz, TS9, Tomness. Tomness. Uh, what do you think? Um, Man, it's fun because this is the game. Everybody gets the come up with different orders. Uh, you can type yours in if you want. Me, I would probably put Spark Boost first because um, that's how I use it. I use the Spark Boost as something to push into things to kind of create problems, right? I love it. Uh, I want to push the amp or I want to push another pedal. I want to do something with it. If you put it after, it's going to be like a volume line boost. So I put the Spark Boost first. Um, then I would do the Octafuzz because I would want to run fuzz into overdrives. So uh, so if I want that option, so then it'll be a fuzz into uh, like my TS9 or Tumnus. And then I would go TS9. Into, actually, think of this. You're in the order I would do. Spark, then Octafuzz, TS9, then Tumnus. Tumnus would be last. Because um, I would, I and here's why. Because a lot of your pedals that you're showing right now, I don't know why you would want to use them together. They'd be, I'd use my TS9 to push the amp or I'd use the Tumnus to push the amp or maybe the clean on the amp. The only one of those, I use the TS9 a little bit on a clean channel. I like it for light overdrive. But if I have the Tumnus on the board, I use the Tumnus instead. So to me, and the pedals you have in the order, I would use the Tumnus as a light overdrive for the amp. I don't use the Tumnus to push the amp for distortion. You could, but I don't. I use it for, you know, Tumnus just to get that cool kind of thing. I know it's a Centaur and it's about pushing amps, but I, I like it for that. The TS9, I would use that by itself to push an amp you know, kind of get the amp, you know, upset. <laughs> it's like poke, poke, irritated a little bit. Uh, the Octafuzz, I'd run that either clean. Or I'd run it into the amp with a little overdrive, but it's same thing. Uh, I'm crazy. So I would take the spark boost and sometimes throw, slam that into the Octafuzz to watch it just go crazy and nuts. That's always fun. But I think that order is fun. I'm curious to see what you guys would do different, but that's, that's how I would run it. Um, uh, Ben Coombs is back with hot dogs. <laughs> why i read that man it was just great okay uh <laughs> huh. all right uh you know what's funny is that it just it made me laugh when you said that because it's like things that you don't it's like things you don't have now because like um, we haven't had a hot dog since you know this happened the foods you have now because you're like uh you know Go to eat. Don't go, go, go. I don't go to the crabby places because they're closed, and you don't go to the good places because they're either closed or limited. Um, okay, and then I'll end on this question. And I hope I miss chats. And if I did, I'll try to make it up to you guys. Then. Paul says, Hey, Phil, is the five watt amp at Stu worth 600? Um, I've actually I've done the model above that. 
the uh, the five the uh, stew uh, amp model is the uh, the it's got the one tone one volume tone amp if I'm thinking the same amp. Um, it I well here's what I here's what I can tell you Stu Mac so I want to I want Stu Mac goes uh, from Mojo Tone and I say that because I like Stu Mac Tone so I don't have any problem because I like I would like you to give business to one of those companies because I've had good experiences with both both have treated well not only being on YouTube but before YouTube I had never friends with those guys um to spec them though so what happens is is they might part I've done a, an amp kit from Mojo Tone and from Stumac. And what I can tell you was they were generally the same, but the Stumac one was $100 more. Not that was just basically like $100 more because they had through Stumac. And what happened in my case was a couple of months, Stumac, I'm sure it's Mojo Tone to upgrade or change. So um, what I can tell you is it's also who do you, who do you like to work with? If you, if you like Mojo Tone, work with them. If you like I, is it worth it? I think it's worth it for the experience. I think it's a decent amp. Um, I, here's what I can tell you. I like that they use American Trans in both those kits from Stu Mac or Mojo Tone. I like the amps themselves, the cabinetry work that Mojo does. Uh, I like the service that Stu Mac gives. The models are actually different or not. Even though you get the same same amp kits, uh, you get different manuals because there's slightly different components. Um, I can't tell you which manual's easier. Um, Certain things I liked about Stu Max other manual over the, the Mojo. But the good news about this, Paul, is what I'm telling you is if you Stu Mac one and get it from Mojo Tone, but either way, you you know, I, that's the one I would recommend. Some people are going to recommend some of these other companies and stuff, and you can get them cheaper and stuff. But I read such a good experience with both companies and the amps I had and the classes I did and all that stuff and the learning education I got from it that I couldn't recommend it enough. And when it comes to something that can possibly burn down your house or hurt you. Maybe not skimp on that as well. You know? So um the other thing too that's like and uh 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 and have is a good port system. You can get those people and get answers to questions sometimes is gold. So and it, especially a hundred or two hundred dollars more, just go that well. So all right. Um, all right. On that note, we're going to call it an hour and 35 minutes. We did it for those of you guys listening on the, 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 uh, Oh, uh, the last, last, uh, announcement quick, a uh, couple things, uh, two things that are probably important. First, I started something new. I'm very excited about it. It went over really well. Uh, and it was a great for me. So if you're a fan of this on the podcast, you already know, cause you're following it on iTunes and stuff and SoundCloud. But what I want to let you guys know is I've started in embedding the bonus podcasts, uh, into the podcast on iTunes. And what that means is, is I'm reading emails. So when you guys send me emails now, what I'm doing is I'm reading the emails and answering the questions on the podcast. There's no video. I might start updating that towards the video. If I do that, I will be putting it on the Know Your Gear channel. That's where the current podcast is now. If you want to see, if you want to listen to the new podcast, you can go to iTunes, you can go to SoundCloud, or you can go to Know Your Gear right now. When I do the index, I will put a link to it. It's the Know Your Gear. I have another YouTube channel and where I put other things, sometimes longer versions of videos and stuff like that. It's got 300 subscribers. It's not, uh, I'm not growing another channel. It's really just the dumping ground for things that I think only the diehards are interested in or strange things that I don't know what to put. So I don't know how to put them on this channel. So I put them over there. Um, but my point is, uh, it was a great podcast because what I'm doing is I'm reading your emails and they're like this, but long form. I'm actually going in more detail and doing more stuff. So it was fun. Uh, so check that out. And, uh, and Marco did a super chat, but he says, how to adjust the Floyd Rose tension, Floyd Rose tension, uh, tension is I'm assuming he means the springs. How do you adjust the, the tension on that? The way it feels you could do that with the springs, but uh, Marco, I have a great, uh, great answer for you. I literally have a video. Uh, I'm looking right now. I got to edit it, but do I have it out? Um, showing you uh, how to make adjustments to those kind of bridges and a device you really need. And it looks like this. And there's a couple versions of this device out there. And this is probably what you want to do if you want that. And plus changing different springs. So look for that video, uh, Marco. It will really help you. And because you did the question, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm serious. I was probably going to put that video out in June. So I will definitely put that on the fast track since to see if you're asking, it means people are interested. And uh, so there's that. And then uh, I want to think real quick. I know uh, on the patron side, I do want to think I have a new patron. I have a couple new ones. 
but I have a new one in the high tier that supports the live show. Uh, and that is William. Uh, William, thank you so much. Uh, I will email you soon. I got to email you to welcome you onto the Patreon thing. I haven't got to that yet. I'm going to get to that. And, um, Oh, and Bill Spruce literally joined today, Bill. Wow, Bill. I mean, I didn't even know. I just found it out right now. Bill Spruce uh, joined. So not only did I have a couple new patrons uh, that came on, uh, 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 Grant Holland upgraded his patron uh, pledge to $5. So he's in the other bracket. I pr Man, guys, thank you. Um, again, supporting the channel in every way. Hopefully, uh, I, I will uh, be talking to you guys soon. Thank you so much, Bill and William and all this, uh, the uh, the. Uh, the KYG crew members that support that. Um, and uh, Marco said he's never seen that tool. It's not a tool, buddy. That's why you got to watch the video. It's a device and you're going to attach it and you're going to, it's going to, it's going to save your life or, uh, or, or you'll just need see how you need to adjust the springs without it. I'm going to show you how, why you can use that or why you don't need it. So, there you go. Uh, and uh, big big thank you to everyone for hanging out this Friday. As always, I will see you guys next Friday. So hopefully soon the internet won't be acting up. Like I said, I've done everything in my power to get the stream to run as clean as it can. And the computer is running at optimum. Everything's fine. My internet's running great. It's just literally once it gets out of here, it's a mess. So on that note, I'm going to let you guys go. Until next week, I want to thank you so much for your time. And of course, until next time, know your gear.